this is your creative flower arrangement that is going to sit in the middle of your table for a good while until your children learn good table manners. It was very evident that these parents hadn't sat in their own house at the dining table implementing good manners. As you'll see, each flower has a message. Use your silverware to eat. Play with toys, not your food. So today, what we are going to do is to take our flower arrangement and we're going to take it out. We're going to take it to the restaurant, we're going to place it on the table, we're going to look over our bouquet of flowers and we're going to implement these rules on the fly. Joe's face looked a picture. Oh, my word. Are you kidding me? We're going to a restaurant. But, uh, you know, he rounded up the kids and off we went. Sit down. Sit. Sit down. Josh decided that he didn't want to sit in his high chair and he kicked off this complete meltdown and I thought, well, you know what, we're staying here. Uh, he's having a temper tantrum because you're telling him to do it, but you know that he peeks and then he lets go. I've seen this a hundred times before. You just keep with it and then the child realises. Sit down this is all my fault. I'm his mother, and I felt responsible for his meltdown. Sit down. No. What is he learning right now? That every time he screams like that, you pick him up. So what do you think he's going to continue to do? Scream like that? Exactly. For some parents, it can be highly embarrassing when you're in a restaurant and your kid is screaming down the house. But if you don't learn to stick with it and push through, then you'll never go out to a restaurant and enjoy yourself. Now he knows he's got to scream for double the time before you hold him again. Instead of following through, you did the easier thing, and that was to hold him. You just think it's never going to end and nothing's going to work, and at that point, you want to just get up and leave and, you know, just go home and eat. OK, so the difference between what we're seeing here is actually Joe's interacting with him. He's talking, he's asking him if he wants a few things. You know, rather than trying to console him, he's actually just interacting and talking with him. After Josh calmed down a bit, I was able to get back to the task at hand and teach these kids some table manners. Put your elbows off the table, hey, Sarah. Oh, dear, we need to put that big flower in front of you. Huh? Please. Daddy, you me some lemonade, please? The quickest way to teach your kids table manners is to lead by example. And yes, that does include how to use your silverware. Look at mommy's hands. You do this, put your finger there, put your knife like this, and you hold the chicken and you cut with the knife. And what does the fork do? The fork holds the chicken and then this. Now that clear expectations have been laid down for the kids at mealtimes, if they just follow through, there's no reason why this family won't be able to go out again and dine in peace. I'm really pleased to see that. Well done. Good job, Sarah. And you, Sarah. Keep your elbows off the you. table, though, love. But good job for using your napkin. This wasn't a bad first go. <laughs> it was just awesome. I was able to sit at the table for the first time and eat with my family. I will see you back at the house. Thank you. You're welcome. See you later. Who wants to play shots? Do you want to play shots, Mummy? Yes, thank you. OK, me. OK. After a stiff talk with Deb, I was pleased to see that she was on board because we had to teach Hannah all about stealing and how wrong it was. So this is our supermarket. OK, so where do our tins go? The supermarket. Uh, up there. Okay. As soon as we started to improvise, I could see that Deb's attitude started to change. So I think the stiff talk did some good, and now we can start to make some real progress. And innocently, she feels like she can just take it and it's okay. okay. But we need to teach her that it's wrong to do that, and we're going to do that by teaching her exactly what we do in, in the real world, in the adult world, and how we pay for things. Hannah was the shopper, and I was the cashier, and Joe was the shop owner. We gave Hannah some money and a little basket so she could put some food in it and take it to the cashier. We have a tomato. Hannah was a little confused at first. Excuse me, we need to pay for these first. Excuse me, did you throw something in there that we didn't pay for? 
Chloe. The apple. <gasps> My word, excuse you, me, madam. You need to pay for the apple first. Yeah. Excuse right. me, shall I call the manager? That's stealing. That is stealing. We had to set a firm example, but one that would be fun so that she would remember and know that stealing is wrong. Are you going to pay for it? Yeah. Oh, all right, OK. It looks like you owe $5. Yeah. <laughs> yes! She loved it. She had so much fun with it. And this was a great technique to teach Hannah not to steal. You have a nice day, ma'am. So long. You're a good little shopper. So you paid all of this with money? Yeah. Hannah got it. She she understood that mommy can't give you that until I physically pay for it with money. When we're in the supermarket or in the shops and we pick things up, we have to pay for them. Because, because if we just take them and we don't pay for them, it's stealing. That's a really bad thing to do. Would you like to have a go at being the cashier now? Yeah. OK, and mommy do the shopping? Yeah. OK, let's do that. I'm not going to make you sit on the toilet. No. I'm not going to make you sit on it. To get Dylan another step closer to using the toilet, I took him into the bathroom to explain this is where we go. Mummy and Daddy sit on this potty and their bottoms go here. But if Daddy tried to sit on this one, it's too small, but it will fit your bottom. If you want to, you can go on this one or you can go on this one. But you must go on the potty, not in your pants, because you're a big boy now. And big boys go in the potty. Now that we'd established where you go for a pee, we just had to hang out and wait until Dylan needed to go so that Dad would have a chance to perform that step. Dylan started to grab it himself, so I took Dylan into the potty and put him down, and he started having a little bit of a fit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. Dylan was fighting it tooth and nail. He didn't just want to let go and go for a pee. And so I had Dad refocus him so that he could relax. Why don't you just go? <laughs> what I think I'd like you to do as well is to sit him on that big potty like that and then talk to him about something else. And if he starts to scream, just very casually say, no screaming, listen to Daddy, because Daddy wants to tell you a story. It's really about being low key. We shouldn't be making a big fuss about this. It's about him just being in a place where he feels comfortable enough to sit on the toilet and do what every other one of his family members does. You want to hear my story? So the big boat had a big elephant in it, and they sailed all the way across the ocean. And then they came into port, and there was all little houses on the hills, and you could see people running and playing. And a little boy, just like you, and a little girl like your sister came up to the dock because their daddy bought him a big elephant. I could see that that was actually having a really good response with yeah, Dylan. You know, he started to quieten down. And they walked it up the hill, and every time <laughs> the elephant stepped like this, the bell went boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. And it looked with its happy face and was like, Bleh. Within a few seconds, he was totally distracted from, you know, holding back. And the next thing we know, he's peeing in the potty. Did you pee? Let's check it out. Actually, you did pee. To see it work, it felt really good, I think, for both of us. Do you feel a little better? Did you tell me you feel better? Kevin did an absolutely excellent job. It was a real big breakthrough. The boys love to snack on loads of junk food, and that can make them hyperactive. And then they're going to lose their appetite, and they're not going to want any of their meals. In order to stop the boys from helping themselves to all the snacks, I've brought in a snack box. You can uh, most definitely take that into the pantry and clear up all your snacks oh, and put them in there. Yeah, OK. The purpose of having the snack box is so that the boys don't feed on those snacks throughout the whole day so that they don't want to eat come lunchtime or dinner time. Oh, I see lots of things that could go in this box. <laughs> Take a look. The snack box. Okay, you guys. Even though I've curbed the children from eating snacks, it's still not going to completely change Caden's eating problem because that's all about control.
There's no reason, unless he's allergic to any particular food, that he shouldn't eat the same as his brothers. When Tammy realises that she's losing control of dinner time, what she needs to do is to separate the food on Caden's plate and explain to him exactly how much more she wants him to eat. First, I want you to eat this meat, and then I want you to have one bite of corn. Just a bite. Oh, he's got to have the big bite, like you said, and then he can get done. Finish this meat, and you can take a bite of corn. Let's not stall. Address that situation again. Okay, let's finish that meat up, please. What are you doing? Finish that meat right there. Get away, baby. Let's eat that one bite of corn. Keep on him. Keep on him. Caden was still resisting to eat, and so I taught Sean how to set by example, show and tell. Check it out. Dad's going to get his bite. Get your bite. You get yours. Do it together. It's a teamwork. One, two, three, go. Bad boy. Good boy. Woohoo. Way to go, well babe. Done. That's it. my boy. At least you tried it. When we first. <laughs> sit down together, yeah, I, I probably did doubt Joe's ability and the knowledge that she had of kids, you know. I, I was proven wrong. <laughs> I mean, Caden did a 180. Very proud I'm of you. super proud of you, honey. I think it's wonderful. It's the same place from all, how well they're doing. And I'd like to say well done to Mum and Dad. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting to you, little guy. <laughs> I'm getting to you. Whilst Mum was feeding baby Sean, Andrew wanted his chocolate milk warmed up, and he threw a massive tantrum over it. No! I can't even understand you. You're crying so much. When you're done crying, you come up and ask me what you want nicely. Mom, I want it. What do you want, Andrew? I don't understand you. Talk to me properly. Talk to so me properly. I can understand Normal you. Talking. You, Andrew. You want your drink warmed up? Now ask me nicely. I'd like my drink warmed up, please, Say it. mommy. I want my drink warm up. Ignore it. Ignore it. I want to teach Andrea how to not give in to Andrew's tantrums. What's going on? What's Come in, Fred. Fred was in shock. He looked very pale. Are you okay? What? You seem. Is it the crying? I've never seen him act in this manner before. You don't hit me, Andrew. I don't like that. Andrea started to catch on very quickly. And when he hit her, she took him straight to the naughty spot. You don't hit people. You sit there and you think about it. It upset me as a parent to see my child become that emotionally upset where he was just almost begging to be picked up and held. I want you to listen to what I'm saying because I've been in many, many houses where parents have thought, oh my God, it feels like it's all gone mayhem. It feels like it's getting worse. The only thing that just got worse was that Andrew just realized that his mum and dad are now in control of the discipline. You don't hit me. <laughs> all I wanted you to do was say, mommy, can you warm up my chocolate milk in a nice, nice way? Don't pick him up, it's not baby. Don't pick him up. Don't pacify me in that way. Honestly, you are not you are not being cruel. You're just setting boundaries. He will thank you for it later. Trust me on this. Or he will. Okay? Anytime somebody comes in your house and starts to give you directions, it's hard. It's hard to accept change. It's hard to accept criticism. Yeah! Here's your clothes. Brandon and I are leaving. Excuse me? What is going on here? You know what? Check it out, baby. The house rules apply even outside the house.